Hello students, welcome to the next lecture of the BMGP lecture series that is on the part 3 of the measuring instruments. In the previous lectures, we saw the measuring instruments for the wear and the speed. Right. In this one, we will see the fuel consumption, uh, vibration and the noise. Right. These three types of the characteristics will be measured in this video. So, let us see the methods to measure these three components in detail. The first thing is the method that is required to measure the fuel consumption or the instruments which is required to measure the fuel consumption. Right. In that case, the first one is the volumetric based type analysis of the fuel consumption. And the second one is the gravimetric type analysis of the fuel consumption. Now, these two types will give you the fuel consumption based on the fuel consumed per time. Right. So, in the first case, you will get the value on based on liter per second. And in the second case, you will get the value based on the kg per second. Right. The third one is the fuel consumption based on the distance travelled by the vehicle. Right, that will give you the average of the vehicle. That is based on the kilometers per liter. Right, that we want to measure for our vehicle if we are a normal driver or a only an owner of the vehicle, then we want to know the average of the vehicle. So this is how we will measure the average of the vehicle based on the distance travelled method. The fourth one is the fuel consumption measurement with respect to the power developed. In that case, the simple MOS test will be used to measure the fuel consumption based on the brake power generated in the vehicle. Let us see these four methods in the detail. The first one is the volumetric based type fuel consumption method. In that case, you can see the simple graph on the screen that shows the normal setup that is required to measure the fuel consumption based on the volume, which means based on the liter per second or any other volume unit that is given. In this case, we have used the cubic centimeters to measure the fuel consumption. In that case, the tube flask has been used one with the 100 cc and second with the 200 cc flask. First the fuel comes from the 100 cc flask and that goes in the engine and that is being consumed. After the consumption of the first flask, the second flask supplies the fuel which is of the 200 cc and this supplies to the engine and the time will be noted down while the fuel is being consumed and in that certain time the given amount of the fuel based on the volume is being consumed. So, after completing the process, if we divide the used volume by the time that is being used, you will get the value of the fuel consumption based on the volume per time. You can simply understand this method by the burette method which is used whenever we are doing the testing for the engine performance. In that case, the fuel has been supplied from the burette on which the volume has been noted down on the burette up to a certain amount the fuel has been filled after the engine has been started. So, fuel will come from the burette which has been already noted down. The stopwatch will be used to measure the time. In how much time the complete amount of the fuel from the burette is being consumed in the engine will be measured and you will get the value of the fuel consumption based on the volume per time that is liters per second. In the second method of the gravimetric fuel flow measurement, the simple graph has been again shown. The fuel from the fuel tank will come from the fuel tank from the pipe to the flask. The flask has been kept on the weighing machine. Now, the weighing machine will give you the weight of the fuel that has been filled in the flask. After the completion of the filling, the valve A will be closed and valve B will be opened. 
the valve b will supply the fuel from the flask to the engine so when we start the engine the fuel will go from the flask through valve b into the engine so again the time will be noted down for the consumption of the measured quantity of the fuel the measured quantity based on the kilograms of the fuel so in this case you will get the value of the fuel consumption based on the kilograms per second right so these two methods are used whenever we are testing the engine right the third one is the fuel consumption with respect to the distance traveled right whenever we want to measure the average of the vehicle this is the procedure that is required to be followed by the driver right in this procedure there are some simple steps which needs to be followed for that what we will do is that we will first record the reading of the odometer and after recording the reading at the same time we will fill the our fuel tank to the full level right we will fill the fuel tank until the fuel level reaches the fuel level right after that once we have recorded the odometer reading we will drive the vehicle up to some certain kilometer the random kilometers it is not required for some fixed kilometers but some random kilometers will be driven by the vehicle for example we drive the vehicle up to a 200 kilometers and then again what we will do is that again we will go to the fuel station for the filling of the fuel once again at that time what we will do is that we will record the odometer reading once again that will be our final odometer reading that will give you the kilometer that is driven by the vehicle and also we will record this time the liters of the fuel that is been filled in this time right so what we will know is that the distance traveled by the vehicle from the first time we have filled the fuel and after that how much fuel has been used during the time of the distance vehicle has been traveled so what we will get is that the readings of the odometer will be subtracted from the final to the initial reading that will give you the distance traveled by the vehicle and that will be divided by the fuel level or the fuel that we filled in the vehicle during the second time of the fuel filling right so what what that shows is that in that case this this amount of fuel is been used when we drive, drove the vehicle up to a certain kilometer so after dividing the distance traveled by the amount of the fuel you will get the average of the vehicle based on the kilometers per liter right this is the value that is required for the measurement of the average of the vehicle right next method is the fuel consumption with the power developed in that case the power developed method is used whenever we are doing the mos test of the vehicle during the mos test we require one certain component that is called as dynamometer dynamometer applies the load on the engine and by varying the different load the performance of vehicle is been tested so at that varying load the fuel consumption can be measured with the help of this method dynamometer comes in the certain different types the first one is the rope dyn brake dynamometer the second one is the prony brake dynamometer these two are the mechanical types of the dynamometer the second uh, the third one is the hydraulic dynamometer which is much accurate compared to the first two type which were the mechanical type of the dynamometer in the background of the video you can see the setup of the engine connected with the dynamometer and in that we have seen the hydraulic dynamometer which is used with the engine coupling method and the last one is eddy current dynamometer also it is known as the electronic dynamometer so in the case of the electronic dynamometer the all the output has been given by the electronic method we just have to give the input in the system and the electronic dynamometer will work automatically based on sensor system 
so it is the most accurate type of the dynamometer which we can use right now so these were the four methods which is required to measure the fuel consumption in the vehicle right the third method can be used by any driver or any passenger to measure the average of the vehicle but the other three methods is used whenever we are testing the engine for the, its fuel consumption right you cannot use it after the vehicle has been manufactured and if you want to measure the average you have to follow the trick that is the third method right next let's see the measurement of the noise the noise can be measured with the instrument that is called the noise dosimeter in the background you can see the noise dosimeter has been used to measure the exhaust noise coming from the silencer of the vehicle the dosimeter will be placed from a certain distance from the silencer or whichever the source we want to measure the noise for and the dosimeter will give you the reading based on the decibel unit and that decibel unit will have to be in the certain required value otherwise the noise needs to be reduced in the vehicle right the noise is important factor for the comfort of the driver and the passengers of the vehicle the last one is the measurement of the vibration now the vibration is generally generated in the vehicle in almost all the components but because of the insulation that is provided in the vehicle the vibration doesn't come towards the passengers and driver whenever we want to measure the vibration there are two instruments the first one is vibration transducer the second one is the fft analyzer in the background you can see the vibration transducer has been used to measure the vibrations of the engine component and in that case the vibration will be noted down based on the graph the graph will show the amount of the vibration that has been happening whenever the engine is running the second type is the fft analyzer now fft analyzer is a one big test rig on which the vehicle is been placed and with the help of the different sensor the computerized working process will give you the value of the vibration that is been generated in the figure here you can see the vibration is being measured in the vehicle by the help of the fft analyzer right so these are the methods to measure the fuel consumption noise and vibration so here the chapter number 2 is commenced after this we will start the next chapter that is chapter number 4 that is on the maintenance and overhauling from the next video lecture until then thank you so much